20 more brings Nigeria's COVID-19 confirmed cases to 131. Records to death. Sadly, another fatality was recorded over the weekend in the person of a patient who had severe underlying illnesses. Our young state governor, Shei Makinde, tests positive to coronavirus. Defense headquarters to enforce lockdown. The armed forces of Nigeria is to implement all restrictions on movement in line with the federal government of Nigeria. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, we uh, focus on COVID-19 situation reports from the states. We started out Monday taking on the outlook of the situation in some states of the Federation as it concerns COVID-19 and the measures for mitigation. That's right, uh, Jumai. Now, following President Muhammadu Buhari's uh, broadcast on Sunday, outlining measures to combat the coronavirus pandemic, it's of course useful to see how those steps are resonating with the subnational entities. It is equally so important to follow up on strategies with government and key health authorities stepping up efforts to contain the spread of coronavirus pandemic. And with the president's broadcast already taken off, the immediate actions to be taken and those on the long run, what are the issues for everyone? Well, some of the measures, of course, uh, range from uh, state governments having to announce total or partial lockdown of their areas of jurisdiction to contain the escalation of the virus and, of course, addressing the palpable panic over diverse issues amongst the people. And with obvious reasons of total lockdown on Lagos, Ogun and the Federal Capital Territory, from the President's directive as at midnight Monday, there are concerns still on what need to be put in place at the different strata of society to work out our attempt to rhythm the country of COVID-19. Well, records of confirmed cases of the coronavirus in the country now stand at 131 with uh, two facilities and some of the persons of course have also been discharged. It is however worrisome to observe that uh, there are probably some persons who have been in contact with uh, those who have tested positive but are just walking loose all over the place without self-isolating or otherwise being quarantined. And while we have witnessed several of the affected states responding to the situation by their capable means, there are calls for deeper measures to addressing a situation that could get out of hand if not properly handled. Now, from insufficient testing kits, PPEs, that's to say uh, personal protective equipment, limited isolation and quarantine points, uh, what exactly do we know of the readiness of a number of states uh, to deal with uh, the matters arising with regard to dealing with uh, coronavirus? And um, another question will be, what means are there to getting the people to observe the stay-at-home order? and lockdown in this first instance to sustain this spread, to contain it. All right, well, those are pertinent issues. Uh, there are many more that uh, we'll pose to our guests uh, who will be joining us uh, at various locations uh, in the course of this uh, program. It's on that note that we'd like to welcome you to, to this edition of Good Morning Nigeria. It's uh, Dubai, of course, is the first day of uh, the lockdown on three states, as declared by President Buhari. Uh, three states, of course, including the federal capital territory, which we're in this instance regarding as a state, Lagos and Ogun. Those are the states that are most heavily impacted by the count already of the positive cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. My name is Kingsley Osadolo, and this is the NTA Network Service, and we are broadcasting from our Abuja headquarters studios. And I'm Juma Yusuf. Remember, the lockdown is for the good of us because the virus itself does not go from one point to another. Human beings take it from one point to another. We are reaching you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. We have our complimentary segment in this conversation, newspaper review, business and others. Thanks for joining us. Let's now join Usman Ali for the morning news highlights. Good morning, Usman. And good morning, Juma and Kinsley. Here is the news highlight.
an exercise of the powers conferred on him by sections 2, 3 and 4 of the Quarantine Act, Cap Q2 LFN 2004, and all other powers enabling him in that behalf, President Muhammad Buhari Monday signed the COVID-19 Regulations 2020, which declared COVID-19 a dangerous infectious disease. In a statement by the Special Advisor to the President, Media and Publicity, Femi Additional, the regulations effective March 30, 2020, also gave legal backing to the various measures outlined in the President's national broadcast on March 29, 2020, such as restriction, cessation of movements, Lagos, FCT and Ogun State, and others towards containing the spread of the pandemic in the country. In addition, to ensure that Nigerians can still perform online transactions and use ATMs whilst observing these restrictions, exemptions, exemption is granted financial system and money markets to allow very skeletal operations in order to keep the system a light operations during the pendency of these regulations. In the meantime, President Mohamed Buhari has constituted an Economic Sustainability Committee to be chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The committee is to look into how to implement strategies to alleviate sufferings of Nigerians at this time. How to integrate some of the data that we have in other respects. So we have uh, data of the poorest of the poor uh, with the assistance of the World Bank. We have what is called the National Social Register where we've mapped out in practically all local governments of Nigeria those who are considered the most vulnerable. Already some of them already uh, get conditional cash transfers, but that again, compared to the numbers, is not, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not large enough. But now we have an, an opportunity of doing much more. As at 9 p.m. Monday, 30th March 2020, 20 confirmed COVID-19 cases brought Nigeria's number to 131. Meanwhile, the country has recorded a second death from the coronavirus pandemic. Minister of Health Dr. Osagi Ihanere confirmed this at a media briefing in Abuja by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 in Abuja. Sadly, another fatality was recorded over the weekend in the person of a patient who had severe underlying illnesses. We have intensified contact tracing and our strategy remains to promptly detect cases, isolate them and follow up with their contacts and also isolate and treat in order to reduce the spread of the infection. Meanwhile, Oyo State Governor Shei Makinde has tested positive of the coronavirus. The governor in a tweet informed the public that the result of his test is positive and that he was asymptomatic and will continue to self-isolate in another development. The governor of Ebony State, David Omahi, has gone into self-isolation to ascertain his status after possibly being exposed to persons that are likely positive to COVID-19. In the area of ensuring that federal government's initiative on social investment programs are sustained during the lockdown, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development stressed that it will carry out the presidential directive to the latter. has directed that we should deploy uh, food materials uh, to these uh, three affected uh, locations, Lagos, Ogun, and the FCT. I have directed DG NEMA uh, to start the deployment of these uh, food materials uh, to these uh, locations. The conditional cash transfer, which Mr. President has also directed that we should uh, pay two months uh, in advance. That we are working uh, with the program coordinator to see that uh, we effectively carry out that uh, direct in the meantime, Nigerians are reacting to federal government's COVID-19 response strategy conveyed in President Muhammad Buhari's broadcast to the nation. Many are optimistic that the action by the president will go a long way towards halting the spread of COVID-19. The, the palliatives will first use the, you say you walk from the known to the unknown. 
therefore you use the known data which came out of the traders' money, cash, conditional cash transfer, and other social inter intervention programs that the government has done before. So that is the first source of data for implementation. One thing that also came out of the present uh, speech is that they have, there is no definite curative treatment for this disease. So the best answer is that of, you know, prevention. So we must prevent. Another aspect that we must also not negate is the fact that our bodies must be equipped through our immune system to fight the disease. And now, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malemi, has further cleared the air on the pro proclamation by President Muhammad Buhari on restriction of movement on account of COVID-19. The Attorney General responding to the criticism by Mr. Olu Adeborua, SAN, explained that the declaration by the President is valid, legal and enforceable. He said the step taken by the president is not only patriotic, but in overriding national interests, is erroneously being subjected to attack for allegedly being illegal. Ebun Olo Adeborua, SAN, had claimed that the president lacked the powers to restrict movements in any part of the country without the consent of the National Assembly. Abu Bakr Malemi noted that the president did not make a declaration of a state of emergency under Section 305. Section 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which will have required the concurrence of both houses of the National Assembly. He further affirmed that sections 305, subsection 6, B of the 1999 Constitution as amended permits a proclamation of a state of emergency to run for a period of 10 days without the approval of the National Assembly when the parliament is not in session, as in the present situation, wherein the National Assembly has shut down. The president, he said, sought to address in the broadcast a public emergency occasioned by a dangerous and infectious coronavirus disease. The restriction of movement came on the heels of advice received from the Federal Ministry of Health and the NCDC, making the order a part of national quarantine measure. As state steps up measures to curb the spread of COVID-19, the level of compliance by Nigerians across the country. And now the Nigerian military will enforce the stay-at-home order issued by President Muhammad Buhari to curb the spread of COVID-19 in Lagos, Ogun and the FCT. This was announced by the Coordinator Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, in a news conference in Abuja. The Armed Forces of Nigeria is to implement all restrictions on movement in line with the Federal Government of Nigeria. As the lockdown commences in the Federal Capital Territory, clarification has been made on filling stations being open during this period. The retail outlets are supposed to be opened. So that's why we are out here today to make sure that uh, all the stations are opened. And if we find out any station that is closed, we'll need to come and find out why it's closed. The Inspector General of Police, Adam Avokar Adamu, has stepped up a special investigation team to unravel the immediate and remote cause of the unfortunate tragic explosion that occurred at Obese near Akure in Ondo State Capital on Friday. 27th March 2020. The team is headed by the Commissioner of Police in charge of the Explosives Ordinance Disposal Unit, Force Headquarters Abuja, CP Mekurishehu, and to work with experts from the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer Frank Mba, the IGP enjoins the citizens, especially those living around the scene of the incident, to avoid the area so as not to tamper with the scene of accident and the ongoing investigations as he sympathizes with them. And that's the news highlight for now. Jumai and Kinsley will join you shortly for the continuation of Good Morning Nigeria. Stay with us. Welcome back. Federal government's timely tackling of the COVID-19 scourge has been applauded with a further call on the administration to diversify the nation's major source of income to stay afloat attacks by scourges even in the future. Details with Kolo Mohammed on Business News. Hello and welcome. Nigeria, 
will have had a dangerous or hopeless precedent to deal with if the nation had to wait on foreign aid to confront coronavirus. The need to establish test centers or expand the grid of diagnostic capacity will have been delayed and ignorance of status will have escalated this scourge. The federal government is working around the clock to ensure timely intervention. Firms are needed to fight epidemics and further calls are being handed out to the federal government to work the talk on economic recovery and growth plan, especially diversifying the source of national income. The advanced countries that we see today, they didn't just start like that. They, they are harnessed and planned. We were talking about how the Central Bank of Nigeria we intervene, especially in the agricultural sector. And if we want to be sincere, the best opportunity for this country, the best opportunity for a nation, for the indigenous, for the citizens of this country, is to see that such groupings like the farm, like the young producers are given opportunity to come together, harness it, and now you will be able to include them. He also pointed out the gains inherent in solid minerals. And my constituency also have solid minerals. Today, if you are looking at the map of areas that have solid gold, you can rule out my area. We have it. The equities market opened the week negatively. Let's not let you see how it went down on Monday. My name is Kulum Hamad, asking us all to stay home, be safe, and maintain social distancing. Thank you. Many thanks, Kulum Muhammad, for the business package. New Super Review is next. We now begin a newspaper review this morning with um, the leadership newspaper. Just below the masthead of the leadership newspaper, Trump, Putin, set to avert further oil price clash. That story is on page five. COVID-19, NAVDAQ begins clinical trial of chloroquine. You find that story on page 11. The bold headlines in the leadership newspaper, FG declares closure of state borders illegal, with riders insist only two states, FCT, affected by lockdown. Approved skeletal service for banks. Confirmed cases now 131. Second death recorded as Lagos discharges far more, five more patients. Senators donate 50% of salaries. President Mahmoudou Buhari comments at Denuga, Alakija, or four churches, others over donations. Just by the side of the picture story there, despite NSPC's assurance, fuel queues surface as marketers shut down stations. The picture story there, Ogun State Governor Prince Dapwa Abiodun Middle, his deputy engineer Naimo Salako Yedele, second left, Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Kunle Olomo, left, Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tommy Koka, right, and team leader of NCDC in the state, Dr. Ogumbode, when the governor declared open the 128-bed COVID-19 isolation and treatment center at Ikene yesterday. As a cross-section of the 128-bed COVID-19 isolation and treatment center, you can see it there in the picture. At the bottom plate of the leadership newspaper, Inspector General of Police commences probe of Ondo explosion. We find that story on page 10. Nigerian ports will remain open. That's coming from the Port Authority. You find that story on page 2. Government approves ID card as passed for journalists. That's a very good one. Oyo Governor Makinde announces testing positive 
for COVID-19. That story is on page 21. Kesley. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the Daily Independent. Uh, above the name flag, headsmen kidnap two Chinese expatriates in Eboy. Headsmen kidnap two Chinese expatriates in Eboy. That's on page 7. Shoyinka faults lockdown, says Nigeria not in a war situation. That's also on page 7. And um, from that same page, federal government exempts banks and finance houses from 14-day lockdown. Now, the lead story, of course, is on COVID-19, and uh, this looks like an exclusive story. It says 26 Americans arrive Lagos Airport without screening. Uh, Nigeria records second death. That's one of the many riders there. Minister says 20% in critical condition. NCDC fears cases will keep rising. and says it is tracing 6,000 contacts. Lagos government discharges five patients. Confirmed case toll climbs to 131. And Governor Makinde tests positive. Uh, you also see there, senators donate 50% of salaries to fight COVID-19. Uh, that's on page 8. COVID-19, Lawan, Bajabi Amila, Somo Olu yet to undergo test. And Ogun shifts internal lockdown till Friday. Uh, that's on page 4. And then you see uh, an update there, a COVID-19 update, that's the worldwide. And the figures are uh, pretty scary uh, worldwide there. You see the figures says... Uh, Cases around the world, can we see that on the screen? Uh, right now it's on the first column there, almost like a sidebar. Uh, and it says, uh, cases around the world over 775,000, with death toll over 37,000. Uh, you have number of persons who have recovered, and then the active cases. In Nigeria, total cases, 131. New cases, 20. Death, 2. Recovery, 8. Active cases, 123. Then you said if there's a photograph also on the front page of the Daily Independent there, and this is the photograph is from uh, Lagos. It says, despite social distancing plea, uh, Lagosians were clustering at the market on Monday, that's yesterday, for last minute shopping in order to beat the federal government's 11 p.m. lockdown order targeted at curtailing the coronavirus pandemic. So, uh, Jumai, Quite we, we busy have, newspapers this morning. Yes, That's we busy. have a number of stories. Just to further elaborate on, on the lead story of the Daily Independent. It says the 26 Americans uh, who arrived at Lagos Airport uh, came in uh, on a chartered flight. Uh, and according to the report, saying that uh, these, they are expatriate uh, workers, uh, allegedly, you know, working for the NNPC, uh, that they were not screened and by, because there were no Perth head officials who were immediately available. But At the airport. They were, yeah, but they were headed for Calabar, where, according to the report, uh, a source is indicating that they might then uh, be uh, put into isolation uh, for 14 days, you know, to observe uh, whatever uh, manifestations there might be uh, amongst them. As you very well know, America has uh, now one of the highest uh, rates of uh, COVID-19 infections around the world. Uh, New York, of course, is the uh, epicenter in the, in the U.S. Uh, the number of fatalities keep climbing. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's an important one for the health authorities to actually worry about. Uh, how did they come in the first instance? Yes, it, when they said that there will be no more flights in and out of the country, there was a window, of course, provided uh, for uh, special flights. And so this could be one of those uh, special uh, permits, you know, given for the flight to come in. But why the uh, uh, passengers uh, were not screened up on, yes. on arrival uh, at the point of disembarkation is, uh, is something that they will have to take a look at. Of course, perhaps it should also be easy to trace them. Mm. Uh, how then did they go to Calabar? Did they take a local flight uh, to Calabar? You know, and so on and so forth. So those are the you know, it wouldn't, it, that can't happen in America. 12 Nigerians can't just go into America from the airport and just proceed. We need to take stringent measures. On It doesn't matter where you come from, actually. That's right. If Nigerians can be screened at the airport, I think they too should be. That's right. Uh, that's, that's, that's important. Yes. Now, that, that, the photograph there, you know, this is part of the major challenge that uh, we're, we're facing in the country. Mm. Uh, you, you know, when you talk about social distancing, uh, it's this uh, new... Uh, ways of having to deal with uh, a virus, an unseen enemy. Uh, uh, this is the typical scene, you know, in a 
crowded market mm. in, in Nigeria. Uh, and you, it's, you can see that you know, in most states of, mm. the, of, of the Federation uh, where you have large markets. But the, the most important thing is to keep up with the messaging that sins like this are not acceptable. Yeah, no. Because you never can tell you know, who is a carrier of the virus. And when you mingle like this, of course, uh, the rate of infection is bound to accelerate. Yes, um, you know, I don't know if the education and awareness is out there as much as it should be. If you look at this picture, I believe 75% of them are not even aware of the danger of COVID-19 and if it spreads, what it can do to Nigeria. I, they are not aware. I don't think most of them are educated on that. Well, I, 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 want, I, I mean, I want is not in a position to yes. ascertain their level of awareness. Mm. But uh, look, uh, what, what is here is a tension between, all right, maintaining social distance and then preparing for a lockdown. Because for 14 days, uh, you are not supposed to, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to be out and about. And I said, look, I better go and stock up so that uh, in the course of the 14 days, you know, we don't go hungry. So that's part of the tension. But of course, some other persons are taking the proactive steps of gradually, you know, stocking up yes, okay. uh, their pantries and uh, just be sure that, you know, they avoid sales like this. But now that the lockdown, of course, has been uh, uh, effective since <coughs> 11 p.m. last night, we hope that we would not see sins like this. Okay. Uh, in, uh, in Lagos. You know, Juma, the, the, the other story, I mean, the Attorney General of the Federation has very appropriately replied to it yes. uh, about the legality or otherwise of what the, uh, the President uh, directed with regard to the lockdown mm. of the Federal Capital Territory and two states, Ogun and, uh, and Lagos. Ogun has now uh, been able to uh, extract, as it were, a special dispensation to commence its own lockdown on Friday because it says, look, the people will get ready and be prepared mm. for it, uh, show that, you know, that they are, it's, it's much more effective rather than having people sneak around and then beating uh, the, uh, the deadline. So as I said, the Attorney General of the Federation has very appropriately uh, responded to this because part of the claims uh, already up up and out there in the uh, in the media uh, was that look the president didn't have the powers the president was acting uh, you, you know without due process mm. uh, that ordinarily I mean, he should have had a recourse to either the national yes, assembly yes. or based his uh, declaration on uh, on law so the attorney general of the federation says the quarantine act is there the provisions yes. of the quarantine act are also clearly spelled out yes. uh, but, but i think there's one other point to add because when it says that, look, we are not in, a person says we are not in a war situation, we have to be careful because if the president were to declare a nationwide state, state of, of emergency, emergency, there are procedures usually outlined for declaration of yes. a state of emergency uh, in the constitution. And the last time that Nigeria was in a total state of emergency uh, happened during the Civil War. Mm. Uh, the state of emergency was declared in 1967, and that state of emergency wasn't lifted for, for 11 years. Right. It wasn't until 1978 that the military regime of uh, then General uh, uh, Obasanjo right. lifted the uh, state of emergency, uh, and of course also lifted the ban on, on partisan politics. And when you are in a state of emergency, uh, there, are, there are powers that are vested in the government. Yes. Uh, the government can requisition your property. The government can requisition your assets to enable it to prosecute the cause of, of, of the state of emergency in, in the entire country. But of course, we have had situations where we had limited state of emergency. I've been in a state of emergency situation uh, that's for right. nine months. Precisely. That was in Boronu. Yes. yes. So I know uh, how it feels. Precisely. And then you also saw what happened in uh, Plateau State. Mm -hmm. And also Ogun State, in the course of this Fourth Republic, yes. uh, Obasanjo, as uh, President, yes. Commander in Chief of the yes. Federal Republic, declared a state of emergency mm. in Plateau and then appointed the sole administrator mm. uh, for, uh, for Plateau, Plateau and then also for. Uh, for Ekiti State, Ekiti State. Ekiti State. And you saw that, of course, that led to the suspension of the democratic structures during the pendency of the state of emergency. But we are fighting an invisible enemy. And the, and the whole world is, of course, in paralysis. You don't know where it's coming That's from. That's right, on, on account of this. So I think it's, it's, it's important that uh, we focus on the actual goal. Mm. Uh, the president has not sought to usurp the powers of the, of, of the state governments. And, of course, uh, there is a basis for that in terms of, uh, of uh, the uh, Quarantine Act. One other point, sorry, uh, Jume. Uh, you, you know, when the president gave his uh, nationwide broadcast 
on Sunday. Yes. I'm sure you saw the uh, mm -hmm. outpouring of some of the comments from mm -hmm. uh, cynical quarters as to, oh, why was the president uh, not allowed to take questions? Uh, in the course of his broadcast, you know, Kira and I were some upset. Some people said the broadcast was from Cuba. Yeah, that's right. But that, well, that's part of what we need to clarify this morning yes. again. Look, a presidential address is not a press conference. It's not. So the president doesn't take questions. It's not a question and answer session. It's not as if he delivers a statement and then he takes questions. Mm. If the president gives an Independence Day broadcast, it doesn't take questions. questions. If the president gives a Democracy Day broadcast, it, it doesn't, doesn't take questions. questions. Uh, you know the Cuba thing you've talked about? Mm. You know, behind the president, you have two flags. Flags, yes. Okay. One was the Nigerian the national flag. flag. Yes. Then the other, I will explain. Because the, uh, Muhammad Buhari, who is he? He has two titles. Yes. President of the Federal Republic, and it's also Commander-in-Chief. Commander -in -chief. So the other flag you saw is not the flag of any other country, no. it's the flag of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic. <laughs> no, Nigerians, you really have to break down things and explain okay. to them at times. Well, right. now we go to the editorial, um, and it's coming from the Nigerian pilot. It's talking about COVID-19, why citizens should cooperate with government. I'm just going to read a little from it. It is rather surprising that in spite of repeated calls by the relevant authorities, there are still close to 4,370 persons suspected to have had contact with COVID-19 carriers still shying and dodging away from presenting themselves for tests. It is indeed troubling that these numbers are living with families, friends, colleagues and loved ones and infesting them, thereby further spreading the deadly virus. It is this type of behavior that makes the spread of the virus among millions of Nigerians' population fast. When the trend of spread in high-risk countries such as China, USA, Italy, Spain, India, Pakistan, France, South Africa are considered, it diffuses gripping fear and anxiety into the minds of citizens, thereby creating more social problems. This is where, unfortunately, our country is at the moment. Well, again, I think that the, the uh, point to just add to that editorial is, is a simple one. Yeah. Look, uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus is not a social disease. Right. It is not something you should be ashamed of. It's yes. a respiratory uh, infection. Just in this like case, of course, it turns out to be flu. absolutely much, and the world doesn't understand it. Mm. And you can see all around the world, uh, there are big names that uh, have contracted it. Uh, the, uh, the, the Prince Charles, who is also the head of, of the Commonwealth, has it. The British Prime Minister has it. The wife of uh, the Canadian Prime Minister has it. You know, unfortunately, Manu Dibango uh, had it, and then he passed when he was at the six in Paris. Yes. In Nigeria, we have three governors who have been confirmed uh, to be positive, the governor of Bochi, the governor of uh, Kaduna, and now the governor of Oyo State. There's nothing, you know, to be ashamed of. If you have, uh, this, if you have a cough, are you, are you supposed to be ashamed of it? I mean, except, of course, it's tuberculosis, you know. Uh, but if even then, nothing for you to be ashamed of. So, that's the, if you want to sneeze, you know, you have been, you've been uh, advised, you know, sneeze into the uh, crook of your elbow or get out an handkerchief and sneeze. Because if you sneeze, sometimes, you know, the thing can even relieve you mm. instead of you pretending that, you know, you, you, are, are you with me? Yes. So, so if, if, you, if, you came, if you came from outside the country and you suspect yourself, of uh, you know some symptoms or otherwise isolate and then uh, otherwise report yourself to the authorities. Yes. Jumen. <laughs> Thank you, Kesley. We'll take a break now. When we return, our conversation on COVID-19 and situation report instead begins. Don't go away. Welcome back. And as I prompt for our conversation, here are excerpts from the guests on our first part of the discussion on COVID-19 and the situation reports from the state as put together by Abdul Salam Jibril. There is a big significant difference with Ebola and with the COVID-19. The difference is that Ebola is hemorrhagic. COVID-19 is respiratory um, illness which can be easily be transmitted and it can get to more people unlike Ebola. For someone to have Ebola, then you must have direct contact with an infected person. But this is quite different. One meter 
if you are not one meter apart to someone that is already having COVID-19 and the person sneezes or coughs, your probability of getting it is higher. Measures has been taken like uh, it has been aired on the news since uh, 27th of this month uh, precisely uh, by 12 midnight uh, all state uh, board uh, our borders with other states has been locked down and uh, we have created a lot of uh, sensitization programs and then preparedness that is by uh, setting up isolation centers. This pandemic there is no state and federal. We are working in FCT as, as, as Nigeria. Now the first activated treatment center is at University of Ujetina of Guagalada where we have a 40 bedded center with um, uh, ICU. So that center is active and we already have patients being managed there. I expect the constituents, I mean the parliamentarians at various levels to come out with their own support. If it's two water tankers, you can supply your constituents. If it's food supply, you can use, uh, buy from the market and distribute to your constituents. This will go a long way uh, to help whatever government is doing. All right, uh, those were excerpts from our conversation uh, yesterday on uh, the situation in the states. Now, today, of course, uh, we are continuing with, uh, with that. Uh, we also have with us in the studios here this morning the Honorable Minister for Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed. Uh, Minister, pleasure to have you. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Kinsley. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Elijah Lai is also a member of the uh, Presidential Task Force on COVID 19. From uh, our uh, Enugu Network Center, we'll be joined by Dr. Daniel Umezurike. Uh, Umezurike is the Honorable Commissioner for Health of Ebony State. Uh, Dr. Umezurike, pleasure to have you with us on the program. Okay, I think um, Dr. Umezurike is not there right now. Our guest in uh, Medugri, Dr. Saliu Ali Kwayabura, is Borno State Commissioner for Health. He joins us from our Medugri Network Center. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you, Jumwe. Good morning. All right. Uh, we will also uh, be joined uh, subsequently uh, from uh, our Benin uh, Network Center, the State Commissioner for, for Health, uh, once we get uh, our equipment uh, properly sorted out. I earlier introduced the Airborne State Commissioner for Health, who will also be joining us from uh, Enogu uh, Network Center. But let's begin with uh, Elijah Lai Mohammed. Uh, g give us uh, a situation report uh, from the lens of, uh, or rather through the lens of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Well, um, you have, I think, uh, set the ball rolling just before I came in, when you announced that as of today we have 131 um, cases and we still have uh, fortunately two mortalities. Uh, Lagos still remains the epicenter closely followed by Abuja and then uh, we have uh, states like uh, Edo, Bauchi, uh, uh, Bauchi, we have Edo, we have uh, Kaduna, we have uh, about Obo eight State. other states, Obo, uh, Obo yeah. states here. Um, and for us at the uh, Presidential Task Force on uh, COVID-19, uh, we, 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 we want to stress a few things. First is that COVID-19 is an imported disease. It is not indigenous to Nigeria. And that is why as soon as the borders were closed, the chances of any importation was almost completely you know, eradicated, except for those who probably come back later and smuggle themselves in. But the danger we face now is that of the possibility of a community spread. Because as of yesterday, about 88% of all cases were actually imported. 
another eight percent were from contact people that had made contact with those who came in from abroad and another four percent or thereabout was the most worrisome one because these were people who had no history no travel history and no uh, history of contact with those who have uh, uh, contacted the virus now and that's why the issue of you know look you know uh, contact tracing becomes very important as of today i think we're looking for about six thousand people that have made contact with uh, those who have been infected and that creates a problem for everybody because you see if you have had a contact with somebody who tested positive you might not necessarily have any symptom but you could also spread it this is why we have uh, appealed to people who know they've had contact with uh, you know uh, people who have either tested positive or who have had contact with those who have tested positive, please come up because you see, so far today there is no known vaccine or cure or medicine for COVID-19, and all that is being done in the world today. Is what we call MPI, which is non pharmaceutical pharmaceutical intervention. And what does that mean? That means one, social distancing, two, proper you know uh, personal hygiene, and then three, we must insist also that you know uh, with uh, community spreading does not you know take place. And more importantly, we must listen to what our doctors are saying about you know. Keeping this, you're keeping your distance. About you know, not coughing in, in the public, not sneezing, you know, to, you know, to spread the disease. But the challenge we have today in Nigeria is many. One is that there's this attempt to stigmatize those who have COVID-19, and this is responsible for why many of them are not coming out, even those who've had contacts with people who have uh, had uh, uh, who tested positive because they, they, they believe they'll be ridiculed if they test positive. But like I, I listened to, to your conversation when I was waiting. Wait a minute. There's nothing to be ashamed of by testing positive. It's a purely respiratory, you know, respiratory, uh, respiratory you know, uh, uh, you know, ailment. Now, so we should please in our reporting stop rationalizing you know this issue of x as you know tested positive or y but let's leave it to those who have tested positive to tell the world and i'm glad that even in nigeria many of them have come out to say i've tested positive and i'm going on self-isolation but unfortunately most nigerians take this thing as a joke there's a lot of myths around oh it's not for africans our, our weather or our climate will not allow it it's not my portion now the covid 19 has absolutely no respect for any race anybody nobody today is immune from covid 19. yes we say that some age group are more uh, vulnerable we say people with underlying disease oh yes that is only about your rate of survival but when it comes to you know immunity nobody has an immunity nobody has an immunity against their COVID-19 so what all we can do right now is to uh, uh, um, deepen and ramp up our advocacy sensitization you know campaigns and let people know that this disease Yes, the mortality rate might not be as uh, you know uh, as um, deadly as that of Ebola or SARS, but the rate it is spreading all over the world is worrisome. And while Ebola uh, kills, what COVID-19 does is even worse because it will not only would it kill it kill you, it will kill your economy completely. Because you see, the easiest way to uh, to, to 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 destroy an economy is by disabling. The people. Now you can imagine what the world is losing by lockdown. Several hundreds of millions of people all over the world today are under lockdown. The economy of every country has dryly stopped. Nigeria, for instance, today we you can imagine uh, where the benchmark for our oil, you know, 
which we approved, you know, for for you know, in our budget is about fifty-seven dollars. It's gone to about thirty or under thirty. And you know, the, the implication for that is huge. And when you look at certain industries, like the travel industry, like you know, uh, the um, transportation industry, like uh, tourism, like hotel. Like you can imagine small what business. small business you can imagine what that is why it's important that we listen to government and there's only there are only two ways honestly to cure this thing you must lock down you must you must obey social distance all these large congregations whether it's for a party for a wedding or naming ceremony or a church or a mosque must be dispensed with. And we must obey, you know, personal physical hygiene. That's it. This is what I can say. That and for us at the uh, President's Task Force, uh, we 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 were uh, come out with uh, 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 strategies that uh, we believe that if properly implemented, will be will be able to contain and contain the disease. Uh, I know that. Um, We've run proper testing. Uh, our laboratories, uh, we, we sell with five lab, lab, laboratories. By yesterday, two joined. I think Abaka Lake and Ibana joined yesterday. Uh, we hope that Kaduna, Burakot, Kano uh, will also join before the end of the week. Uh, we have also, since yesterday, uh, uh, started three shifts you know, in all our testing laboratories so that we can ramp up the uh, the the capacity from about 500, we've moved to about 1,000, and we by weekend we'll be able to move to you know, about 2,000 by weekend. In about two, in about um, in about a week's time, uh, two private uh, uh, um, concerns uh, will uh, set up the laboratories to start running, and when that starts running, we're going to have uh, we are going to have an additional capacity of 5,000 you know, uh, uh, testing per day. Uh, but the big real uh, uh, game changer, I think, is um, we'll come in about three weeks' time when uh, the, um, the, uh, the new technology uh, to, uh, it, 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 to um, I think it's called uh, the expert. Uh, when, when it comes on, then we probably have capacity for almost half a million uh, testing, you know, by by uh, per day and that is uh what we're working at but as of today there is no validated who machine no testing machine apart from the one we have some other countries tried it about six forty thousand uh, uh, machines were shipped from uh, china to spain they were all returned because they were not working because we hear everywhere and the world oh, some people do testing in five minutes no but what we're trying to do on our own part is to cut down the time, the turnaround time. Now it's between 12 and 48 hours. We hope that the next few days we'll be able to cut down to about 12 hours, you know. And the more, uh, the, 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 the more laboratories you have, the, more, the, 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 the faster it is for you to, you know, uh, text you know, as many people as possible. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Elijah uh, Lai Mohamed. Uh, let's uh, go over now to our Meduguri Network Centre where the uh, Commissioner for Health, uh, Dr. Saliu, was uh, introduced a while ago. Uh, Dr. Saliu, uh, tell us what is happening in Boronu State. Uh, good morning, Nigerians, and thank you for having me on this program. Uh, in Boronu State, we are not any different from any other state in the country, and uh, COVID-19 is real. We have been very proactive over the uh, past weeks or thereabout. Uh, first and foremost, we have articulated uh, a well uh, comprehended and costed preparedness and response plan. Uh, the government has put in place a high powered committee to implement the recommendations from that plan and to see to it that it's been uh, handled. Uh, that plan is being uh, implemented or is being ruled out across the WHO recommended pillars, which are basically eight. Uh, this has to do with uh, the pillar that uh, looks at coordination and uh, governance. 
we are also looking at the pillar that is very important, which is surveillance. And under surveillance, we've really looked at uh, surveillance to get information from the community. We've also looked at the laboratories for testing, uh, sample collection. We've looked at port of entry. But very importantly, we've also looked at the risk communication uh, pillar, which has to do with a lot of internal enlightenment to the people. Uh, we've also looked at infection prevention and control measures, and of course, uh, case management. Now, under these pillars, we've already rolled out and pre-positioned people. Uh, we have also identified and equipped a 100-bedded isolation center here in the heart of Medjugorje. And uh, rising from our response to the Lassa fever outbreak a couple of months back, we had a seamless transition from that response to the preparedness uh, for COVID-19. The isolation center already has pre-positioned uh, about uh, 20 uh, ventilators which are available with the state government. We have a complement of another uh, 15 or there about with the University of Medical Teaching Hospital. In addition, the University of Medical Teaching Hospital has also identified a 38 bedded facility for isolation. Uh, right now, we've intensified campaigns using uh, IAC materials, posters, and jingles in all the languages out. We've engaged with the traditional rulers and the traditional institution to uh, increase enlightenment to the people. Uh, we've also, I mean, uh, engaged with the community leaders, the road union uh, workers, and every other person. And you may recall that uh, just yesterday, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Bono State, Professor Baba Gana Omar Azulum, uh, announced certain uh, measures that have been put in place. One of those measures is to restrict movement of people into the state and ensure that our only route of access to other states is properly manned. As I speak to you, we have a group of health workers already there who are not only screening people for temperature, but very importantly are ensuring that the culture of hand washing and sanitation uh, and sanitization is imbibing the people as they come into the city and they've been enlightened to carry that on. Uh, in all public places, we've positioned hand washing uh, stations, uh, including the offices, the banks, uh, motor parks, and all such places. We've also uh, cascaded that committee to the local government level and we've asked the local government council to set up such committees in their own areas to empower the disease surveillance officers in the local government together with the PAMOs and other health workers to also go into the community and ask. And one important thing that we have done in Borno State is to talk to the people to say that please if anybody feels is at risk either as a result of travel into the country from a foreign land or contact with anybody that has been uh, confirmed to have COVID-19 disease, to please reach out to the uh, Public Health uh, Emergency Operations Center staff. And so far, we've been receiving very positive calls. We've had to go to a lot of people, advise them first on the conditions and proper measures to take uh, during self-isolation. Uh, increasingly also for those that we think have potential risk, we've collected samples to do the preliminary testings, uh, we've sent to the reference laboratories, and thank God, so far we do not have any case here in Medjugorje. Um, in a small chest, you said you're not different from other states. The Medjugorje has a peculiarity being the epicenter of the Boko Haram insurgency, and to reach out to some local government areas is not possible. I would like to know if, in a possible situation where there will be a lockdown like we are having in Abuja, and I know of hotspots coming from there like Bulaburin, Gonge, uh, um, so many places that are so tight, talking about social distancing and trying as much as possible to, uh, to curb the spread. What is being done in areas like that to ensure that if and when, because that is the question on anybody's lips right now, this happens in Bono, what will be the measures taken to curtail it? Uh, well, in Bono State, what we have done essentially is to look at the state in total. Uh, first, we've profiled our possible risks and graded them. And we've graded the medical metropolitan and jury the urban area as being the highest risk. Uh, we've also graded next to that uh, the border towns like uh, Gamborungala, like uh, Damasak, like Banki. And then we've also put in uh, following that places like uh, Biu, which have uh, the potential to attract uh, 
uh, I mean, travelers from other parts of the state and, in fact, other parts of the country. Now, coming to your question, what is of particular interest to us, apart from the very congested areas, also, also our IDP camps? Our IDP camps are very vulnerable as they are because of the uh, interaction with a lot of foreign partners who are coming in to bring aid. But what we have done at the moment is to restrict access to these uh, IDP camps, making sure that except those on essential services, nobody goes in there. Two is that our food distribution partners have completely changed. Whereas in the past we line up people in very huge numbers and everybody gets a coupon to access their own support measures. These days we've grouped them into groups of 10, not more than 10 at a time. And this has been very successful because since we started this, with a lot of advocacy and sensitization to the people, using the camp managers, using our uh, electronic media, as well as announcement systems, we've been able to prove that. Now coming to a very specific question for the highly dense, I mean for the highly populated areas. Uh, the highly populated areas as they are, are risk areas because of the population, not only for COVID-19, but also for all the contagious diseases. However, what we are looking at with those areas is to first and foremost emphasize enlightenment and education. We've reached out with a lot of educational materials and campaigns to these various, very importantly. Secondly, we've asked them to imbibe the culture of hand washing. And then thirdly, we've asked for social distancing, which are things that people are beginning to imbibe. Uh, as at last week, most of our mosques and churches have come out to preach to say that, look, we need to stay away. And as at last Friday, and as at last Sunday, the number of people attending our congregational prayers have significantly dropped. There's already a ban on public gatherings and groupings. And then some of the measures that have been put in place by the announcement of His Excellency yesterday, I want to go uh, a long way in doing this. Should we have an outbreak, then we might have to move to enforce some of these recommendations, which are at the moment are basically advisory to our people. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Salehu. Uh, we will uh, we'll return to you later in the course of the conversation. Let's come back to uh, the Minister of Information and Culture. While we were reviewing the papers uh, a while ago, uh, the lead story for the Daily Independent indicated that uh, there were some 26 or so Americans who flew into Lagos. According to the paper, uh, the, the uh, passengers on that chartered flight appeared not to have been uh, screened according to uh, the protocol for admitting persons now under a special dispensation uh, and that they were headed to Port, uh, Port Calabar or so. Uh, if, if this is what actually played out, it would be a worrisome development. What's, what's your comment? It's absolutely false. I was outside there when I was listening and immediately I put a call to the head of the Port Health Services. And of course she denied it and I know it is not true too because I'm aware of the history of those uh, you know, 26 passengers. We had problem with, the, with our <coughs> oil production in the bonga, on the bonga field. So they made an application. And all this is we, did, we, we, you know, we have uh, developed at the uh, PTF COVID 19 is that if you are coming into Nigeria after the ban, if the flight is, is you know is originating from you know a country that is about so six of six hours or so or seven hours then or five or six hours you come with a double crew when your crew arrives they don't get down so because they have two crews one crew will be sleeping and resting while the other will take a flight. But I know that, we know that even in aviation, even whether you are sleeping or you are sitting down, the time counts. But because you have a 16 hour work day, even if you sleep for six hours and you turn around again and fly for another six hours, you have not you know, exceeded your, your, uh, your, your, um, your, uh, your, your, your flying time. So anybody, any, any flight that we are approved to come in now, will come with two sets of crews so that there will be no way you are going to get down and you know in, in, interact. But if you must, then you must go into 14 days straight you know, uh, you know, uh, quarantine. Now in the case of uh, the 26 passengers she was, you know, the people was talking about, we were aware 
that they need to come and carry out some emergency work on the Bonga field. It was approved. They arrived yesterday at the airport. They were met by Port Health that screened them and immigration that screened them and we have the records to show that they were screened. So you see people should stop, you know, uh, uh, publishing fake news that would detract from the efforts of, you know, not just government. You see, our health workers, our immigrations, they are our frontline soldiers. They are the ones that are actually at the highest risk of infection. When they make those sacrifices to come to save the country, it's, not, it's quite disheartening for a newspaper with a banner to say that a headline to say that 26 people are not screened. And they don't even know the implication of that. To their entire world, it's as if Nigeria is not taking this fight seriously. But to, I can assure you that story is false, false, and false. Okay, talking about false, you know, there's been a lot of controversy on the president's broadcast on the lockdown in Abuja, Ogo State, and Lagos. You know, blinded by fake news, like you said, a lot of people thought he didn't even do the broadcast from Nigeria. You know, I have, uh, I, I think I said a few days ago that uh, competing with the COVID virus is fake news. And um, when you listen, when you look at what is going on the WhatsApp, you know, uh, platforms, you begin to wonder whether you are in this country. Now, Mr. President, of course, is hale and hearty. The NTA recorded the, 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 the broadcast, but they must find something, you know, uh, uh, disparaging about Mr. President, about the government. Who else could have done it? I've also listened to somebody who said that the president and um, the chief of staff actually smuggled themselves out of Nigeria. And the fellow, the lady was speaking with such finality and authority as if, you know, she was there. We've had other, but interestingly enough, it's not only in Nigeria that we have this fake news over, you know, uh, uh, the uh, COVID-19. but. We, we, we must not be distracted and we must be fo remain focused on our fight against um, uh, COVID because it's a very serious issue. And uh, uh, for us at the task force, uh, we, 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 we know what to do and we, we were very focused on what we are doing. And we know that, like I said, the greatest problem we can have today is uh, you know, it, it, it is for the healthcare system to be overwhelmed, and this is what we are guarding against. People say, ah, "Yes, test, test, test. Test is very good." But you see, where our protocol for testing is threefold: one, if you have no symptoms, you have had no contact with anybody who has who has tested positive, you have no contact with anybody who has come from one of the uh, you know highest density countries. You don't have any problem at all coming to test. Take that again. If you have had no, if you have no symptom at all, you have had no contact whatsoever with anybody who has tested positive. You have not had any contact with anybody who has come from abroad. Then you have no problem. You, have, you, don't, you don't just don't worry. But what don't worry about testing. Don't, don't worry about testing. testing yes. But what you should do, please. Maintain social distance. Wash your hands regularly. Maintain proper hygiene. Don't get into congregations, and and you know and stay at home as much as possible. In Abuja, I might say that is possible because at times you don't even see your neighbor for two months or yes. three months. Yeah. It's possible, yes, in Abuja. Outside the boundaries of the FCT. Is there a possibility of social distancing? No, you may, you may. You see, let's look at this way. You see, I said first, if you have not travelled, you have no, con you have had no contact with somebody who has travelled, you have had no contact with somebody who has been positive, and you have no symptom. You don't even have to bother. 
coming yeah, to it, test. It, yeah, Two. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Honorable Minister, yeah. because this what you are saying now yes. again, just for the benefit yeah. of our viewers. Yeah. Uh, please, once again, I would like you to listen to uh, the Honorable Minister, who is a member of the Presidential Task Force. This is because we have all kinds of messages and requests. Say, some persons have even been calling the NCDC. Somebody has fever. He said, look, we want to go and test this person that we got there. They say that you know they cannot test us. So listen once again at, to the conditions of the basis for you to proceed for testing. They say if I had no symptom at all, you have had no contact whatsoever with somebody who has a positive, you have no contact at all with somebody who has just come back from abroad, and you have no business worrying. Don't please bother asking to be tested. Two, if I had contact with somebody who is positive, or somebody who has traveled, you know, who has come back from, say, the US, the UK, those 18 countries, and you have no symptoms, please just go and self-isolate. And watch, observe yourself, obey social distancing. Of course, when you're self-isolated, obey social distancing. And if you have a symptom, you let us know. Then thirdly, if, however, you have had contact with somebody who has come from abroad or somebody who has said positive and you have symptoms, please call us. Or if you have had no contact with anybody from anywhere but you have, you know, you, but you have symptoms, call us. When you call us, we'll come around and take, you know, samples from you. If you test positive and it's mild, we will just take you to an isolation center where you'll be managed. It's only critical cases, cases that will end up in the hospital. Now, but our position is that we don't even want you to get to the hospital. We don't even want you to get to the solution center. So, I, and that is why, please obey and abide with those simple regulations we've, we've sent out, such as social distancing. You don't, you know, gather in groups. You do not. Uh, you wash your hands regularly. You obey, you know, basic, you know, physical hygiene. Yeah, you no, know, hygiene, you know, rules because. Prevention is cheaper in this case. Everywhere in the world, there is a shortage of testing materials. There's a shortage of, you know, beds. There's a shortage of ventilators. There's a shortage of everything. Look, even countries with very advanced healthcare system have been overwhelmed. And that's because they made the first mistake of not adhering to this basic regulation and basic rules. But even having said that, we have also prepared that in the unlikely case that we have a surge, in Abuja, for instance, we spent the whole of our Saturday, that is a task force, identifying, you know, okay. isolation facilities. And today we have ready at least 700 beds in various parts of Abuja that can you know, serve as isolation center. We also have, you know, uh, thanks to uh, NMPC, our IC unit in Gogalada, that is the Abutichi University Hospital, has been, in, uh, as we have an extra 16 as we speak today. And by the end of the week, the week hopefully, or by the end of next week, mm -hmm. another 16 will be ready. But again, this will only be for critically you know, uh, you know, people that need probably ventilator, people that probably need, you know, who are critical. But also we have secured uh, another space at uh, the Abuja, you know, specialist hospital as isolation, you know, ward and also as IC unit. What people don't understand about IC unit is that IC unit can only be within a hospital complex. Yes. Now, again, we are accrediting every hospital participating with us. Not every hospital can test. Not every hospital can handle 
uh, 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 if, if somebody was te tested positive. As a matter of fact, as I speak today, uh, the, you know, we have this center for research for virology uh, in uh, Iroa, in Edo State, one of the best in the world. The, the entire team is moving to Abuja today to accredit all those facilities that we have identified over the weekend. And then, you see, managing this kind of uh, uh, epidemics is not just about bed space. It's not just only about equipment, it's also about personnel. Because right. only trained personnel. You, you, you know, Honorable Minister, let's yes. pause you in the meantime. And just to recap one very important point, again, for the benefit of our viewers. You have listened to the Minister itemize the steps that government is taking and what measures are required. Uh, it's also emphasized prevention. Uh, and in listening to him, you have not heard the Honorable Minister say that you want to start taking chloroquine. No. Chloroquine is not one of the preventive measures, no. you know, against COVID-19. No. Jumai, yes, you know, we, we've had all of that. But, but let, let's go back to uh, Meduguri. Yes. Uh, the, the Honorable Commissioner for Health uh, uh, in, uh, in, in Borono, uh, you, you've listened to uh, the Honorable Minister of, of Information roll out a, a number of the measures and indeed the facilities and equipment uh, that are being put in place uh, to ensure that in any eventuality, you know, the system can cope rather than being overwhelmed. Uh, it's talked also essentially about personnel. I mean, you're having to have uh, experts coming from Iroa uh, to ascertain and then accredit facilities right here. What would you like to see, for instance, in, in Borono that is missing from the uh, various steps that you have taken listening to the presidential tax care force on COVID-19? Uh, thank you very much for coming back to me. Uh, let me say that uh, the, uh, the discussions with the Honorable Minister are more explicit and it seems to be coming from uh, an expert's perspective. Perhaps uh, we may be thinking of uh, giving him an MD. Uh, anyway, for us in Bono State, what we are most concerned about is the fact that we need to have the testing facility very close to us. For us to have to transport uh, samples from here to Abuja, there is a lot of challenges associated with that. Now, we are already a step in getting to the position that, but perhaps the PTF and the federal government can help expedite that action for us. Uh, first and foremost, the University of Medical Teaching Hospital has the facility for polymerase chain reaction tests. That's the PCR, which is the gold standard for the identification of the virus. However, there are a few things that are still out of place, especially uh, in terms of safety measures and prevention. Uh, secondly, the Honorable Minister has also touched on the issue of using the gene expert machine uh, to carry out this test. There's a lot of literature out there, there's a lot of concern out there that the gene expert machine can actually help in identifying this virus once the appropriate cartridges have been put in place. That is absolutely correct. In Borno State, we have quite a number of gene expert machines because of our response to uh, the uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, burden in the state. And we are hoping that if we have the cartridges, perhaps we'll be able to put that in place and then we'll be able to have a lot of things being done. Now, we are not praying that we have an outbreak in Borno State and of course every other part of Nigeria. But we are very much conscious and aware of our own peculiarities. Having taken the shock uh, for the devastation of this insurgency over the last 10 years, there's been a lot of attrition in terms of healthcare workers leaving the state. Their safety has been our concern. So having to handle this is a burden, is a challenge that is best imagined. And in such we will be thinking of how we will get in more and more and more people. At the moment, we've opened our windows to begin to profile and document volunteers who would probably be able to help us. We've, we are working tirelessly with all the partners who are in the humanitarian uh, uh, fields out there working to see whatever support that we can garner to be able to move. But our emphasis, our concern, our emphasis is on prevention. 
and like the Honorable Minister has said, and which is the gold standard, is that we encourage personal hygiene. Hand washing becomes a priority. Social distancing is a very, very terrible, inexcusable option for all of us if we must prevent the spread of this uh, very deadly pandemic. Honorable Commissioner, you know, the WHO spokesperson, Dr. Margaret Harris, said COVID-19 is like a curve. With every turn, we begin to learn. And I know that Medukuri has a... I've, I've done lots of research before this actually came on. What are you doing in the area of research to sort of try to find, you know, a solution to COVID-19? Uh, well, considering the limited resources we have, what we've been able to do is to take the whole approach holistically. Like I've said, every uh, proven intervention in terms of prevention and surveillance, we have adopted, we have domesticated, and we have documented what we are doing in terms of getting the people profiling them. But very importantly, uh, we've also had groups, the uh, responders from the public health uh, units, even though we have not activated the Public uh, Health Emergency Operations Center for COVID-19, but we meet on a regular basis, now practicing social distancing and having virtual uh, processes by which we meet. We discuss the recent findings, the recent publications as they come in day by day, and look at how we are going to profile, I mean, uh, select what is readily applicable for us and domesticate. So we're actually gathering a lot, uh, we're gathering a lot and lots and lots of data and information, all in the preparedness to be able to bring out an SOP that is adaptable to our own peculiar situation, to be able to appropriately respond should we have an outbreak, God forbid. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Salio. Uh, we'll, we'll return to you in the course of the conversation at our Meduguri Network Center. Uh, let's, earlier, we said that uh, we're going to have the Boeing State Commissioner for Health at Enugu. Uh, that is there now, Dr. Daniel Umezurike. Uh, Dr. Umezurike, we see that you are fully kitted in your reflective jacket uh, for for the business at hand. Uh, tell us what's happening in a Boeing state with regard to COVID-19. Thank you very much, my great audience. Um, in a Boeing state, we are very good. And um, right from the inception, a Boeing state has uh, set up strategic plans in terms of uh, prevention, in terms of surveillance, in terms of preparedness to manage any case. But as of today, Ebony State has not recorded any case. And uh, in the uh, area of uh, prevention, we have commenced uh, sensitization right from the day co uh, coronavirus uh, disease was uh, you know, announced. And we have gone all the nooks and crannies of Ebony State, teaching our people how to prevent and how this uh, disease presents. In uh, surveillance, we have also gone house to house and uh, in all the entry points into a bond state, we have uh, screening uh, health personnel who screen patients uh, looking at their temperature and uh, other parameters. And if uh, there's anyone detected with high temperature, so a further investigation is uh, conducted. We also do house to house in all the uh, 296 health wards in a bond state. And um, in the area of, uh, you know, when uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, was uh, recorded in Nigeria. We also responded by, you know, uh, some policies of government. We closed down schools. We uh, stopped all, banned all public gatherings that would attract more than 50 people, both uh, wedding, both uh, uh, burial, uh, you know, um, child education, and even uh, name it, all the social gatherings banned in urban states. And we have also closed our borders. Because the truth of the matter is that uh, the uh, coronavirus does not have legs, it doesn't have hands, it doesn't have car, it doesn't have you know, aircraft or even a ship to move from one place to another. It must be carried by human beings from one uh, place to another. So that is the essence of our, uh, his, uh, uh, our uh, uh, wonder working governor, you know, banning the entry of any human being from another state to urban state. It's a, a very uh, good strategic measure, and uh, it's working. 
Um, um, the other thing is that that is very pertinent is that uh, we cannot manage uh, coronavirus blindfolded. So Ebon uh, State has made effort, and through the uh, you know collaboration with the federal government, our virology center has been upgraded to be able to confirm uh, the diagnosis of coronavirus. So today, Ebon State is the fourth uh, state, the fourth center that can confirm the diagnosis after Iroha Specialist Hospital, uh, Edo State, uh, Lagos, and Abuja. And uh, it's all but uh, the effort of our dear governor who built and uh, equipped an ultra-modern virology center in Ebon State. And uh, we have already uh, all the facilities to test uh, you know, other uh, uh, viruses like uh, Lassa fever. And that capacity has been built. And uh, with this uh, coronavirus, uh, as they always say, you cannot uh, build something on nothing. So we already have something on ground. So it was easy for us to be upgraded, to be able to confirm the diagnosis of uh, coronavirus, uh, because we already have the PCR machine in our virology center. The other thing is uh, that Ebon State has also constructed and equipped with uh, state-of-the-art equipment a treatment center in preparation for if there's any case recorded in Ebon State. Because um, when you are planning, when you are uh, doing anything, you have to plan, uh, you know, for the worst and, uh, you know, uh, pray for the best. So we have prepared this center, equipped with uh, ventilators, equipped with, uh, uh, you know, monitors, equipped with dialysis uh, machines, and uh, all the state-of-the-art equipment that will enable it to contain any a case in Ebon State, which we pray that we never record in Jesus' name. I come to you, apart from all these precautionary measures that you have counted out and, um, you know, you have no case in Ebon State, but you're bothered by other states, your borders are closed. Let's talk about the compliance of the people. Yes, yeah, the, the compliance of the people has been very tremendous and wonderful. And the law enforcement agents and all the stakeholders have been mobilized. As you can see, even my governor contributes and uh, it goes to border checks to ensure that these things are implemented. And it has been very wonderful and paying off. Dr. Omenzureke, I mean, that's, uh, we've listened to what, what you itemized as the state of preparedness of a boy. And obviously, you are also leveraging on your experience in handling Lassa fever, because usually, on an annual basis, a boy, uh, Edo and Ondo are some of the states with the highest uh, incidence of, of, of Lassa fever. But, there's something you said about having your ICU also equipped with ventilators. Is that what you said? I mean, uh, how many do you have? We have a total of four in the state. Congratulations. Uh, we'll come back to you in, in the course of, 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 the, of the conversation. Let's uh, go over now to our Benin Network Center. Actually, uh, we have to take a break. Oh, yeah. I, I understand. Are we taking a break now? Yeah, we're taking a break now. When we return, the conversation continues. All right, you're welcome back here in the state. Good morning, Nigeria. Reaching you live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Now, we understand that our guest at our Benin Network Center, the uh, Edo State Commissioner for Health is available. His name is Dr. Patrick Okundia. Uh, Dr. Okundia, uh, welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. What is the situation in Benin with regard to COVID-19? Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Uh, Edo State, before the advent of uh, the coronavirus, the uh, index case be recorded in Nigeria on the 27th of uh, February. Uh, Edo State had made several pre preparations. You are aware that we were preparing for to host the nation to the 28th National Sports Festival. And immediately that announcement came with the understanding that uh, coronavirus was ravaging the other climbs in the world. Preparations started in Edo State. And on that 27th of February, when that uh, index case was announced, especially the fact that the index case came from a state called uh, from Milan in Italy, it added to the, the efforts in those states and the need to be very, very proactive. 
the, those citizens have a lot of uh, relatives in Italy. So there are a lot of apprehension. But immediately on the 28th of February, the state government activated the primary uh, public health emergency operation center. And also from the, on the 29th, a task force was set up. This task force of the response for COVID-19 is being headed by His Excellency, the governor of a desk of a dual state, Godwin Obaseki. A technical subcommittee was also set up, headed by the deputy governor of a dual state, Comrade Philip Schweibel. We have since been on the feed and activities have been going on. The fact that we were very prepared against the backdrop that we have facilities already ready because of our experiences with uh, Lassa fever. And of course, you all know that those states uh, is a center of uh, excellence for research and treatment of a Lassa fever. We put more uh, efforts on, on ground to address the issue of coronavirus. Understanding the fact that uh, coronavirus was a new virus and uh, very little was understood about it, our efforts in the state was to boost up the effort of prevention. Surveillance, social mobilization has been on, and we have been doing this across the 18 local governments of Edo State. Our surveillance teams are everywhere, and they have been doing this even before now because of their experiences with Lassa fever. But the government of Edo State has not relented on that. It needed us to, to upscale our level of surveillance. We have been doing this, and of course we know that um, knowing that prevention is better than cure, we have put machineries in place. We, with the support of partners like WHO and then the NCDC, a lot of efforts have been put in place. But going back to the issue of case management, we have been boasting of having an isolation center in a dose state, which is situated at the Iran Specialist Teaching Hospital which is a center of excellence. But in 2018, because of the outbreak of uh, Lassa fever, the government decided to upscale the, the number of uh, isolation centers in Edo State. So we have another isolation center in Benin City at the Stella Abbasanjo Hospital, which was also ready and part of the efforts towards the preparation of the sports festival. Another one was also put up at the Do Not in Central Hospital, Auchi. But unfortunately, on the 23rd of March, we recorded the first confirmed case of coronavirus in Edo State. And with that, the government of Edo State insisted that we must scale all the arrangements and plans we have. As we speak, we are building new and more isolation centers in Edo State. A new building is also coming up, a 28-bedded isolation center at the same site, uh, center with the old one at Stella Abbasanjo Hospital. We also have another new one coming up in Aochi, also a 14-bedded isolation center. But just recently, the government of the day said, rather than have sporadic isolation centers in, uh, cut across everywhere, let's have a dedicated complex. So we have the hospital, Stella Abbasanjo Hospital, a 164-bedded hospital. And the director of the governor is to evacuate all the services and personnel within this hospital and move them to the new uh, Edo Specialist Hospital. And then recreate and dedicate this hospital as a coronavirus complex. The hospital boasts of other facilities. We have a very huge incinerator and of all the persons and personnel that have been trained, we are, they are all familiar with this center. So we have Stella Basanjo Hospital now dedicated as a center for coronavirus, where we have two isolation centers, and we also have the main hospital to be used as a holding area. We also have some other holding areas within the Edo Metropolis. The Ogbe Nursing Home has been reconstructed and this has individual self-contained rooms. These are reserved for high-profile persons. We also have the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, the Era Specialist Teaching Hospital, 
upscaling the facilities they have, and creating dedicated areas for response to coronavirus. Of course, you know, Era Specialist Hospital is the only center for the diagnostic uh, testing of coronavirus in Edo State, and one of the five in the country. The state government has also made effort to say that one diagnosis center may not just be enough because of the logistics involved in taking samples from Benin and Edo North to Era. An effort is being made towards getting another molecular uh, PCRO machine to be domiciled in Edo uh, South, the capital city of Edo State. These are all going on. As we also speak, the governor of Edo State has put machineries and resources on ground for the training of all healthcare workers in Edo State. As we speak today, the training of trainers is ongoing at the state secretariat, wherein 108 participants will be trained. These 108 participants will be deployed at the end of this training to the 18 local government areas of Edo State to train all the other healthcare workers. And we are planning to have a coronavirus screening center at least three screening centers in each local government area of Edo State. And then we now have four centers of excellence for the treatment in case of case management and confirmation of uh, diagnosis in the states. These four centers of excellence uh, are the Stella Obasanjo Hospital I mentioned earlier, the Ira Specialist Teaching Hospital, the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, and the Central Hospital, Auchi. As you are aware, the, government of, the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, following his exposure to some members of the Federal Executive Council who came out confirmed positive to coronavirus, immediately went on self-isolation. And he also... If I might come in, Honorable Commissioner, you've reeled a lot of, you know, surveillance, awareness, you know, construction of isolation centers and including high profile cases, which I can't seem to grasp because they say COVID-19 is no respecter of persons. And then what we would like to know is Eboy has four ventilators. What is the state of your facilities in Edo State right now? Uh, like I said, uh, the governor en engages on a daily basis. We have Zoom video conference meetings with all the pillars of the response team. Now, the facility level has been upgraded. We right now have 25 ventilators already in Edo State, and they have been distributed in all the centers, these four centers of excellence I mentioned. Some are still under, uh, undergoing uh, uh, installation. But right now, we're, there are about 14 already being tested and uh, OK. We are aware we, we just have two cases of coronavirus that have been confirmed. And they are doing very well, not even needing the, the, the function of a ventilator. But however, the, the direction of the governor is to ensure all that is needed for full readiness must be put in place. We have dialysis machines available in the teaching hospitals. We have oxygen concentrators. A plan is also underway to put an oxygen plant at the Stella Abbasunjo Hospital Complex. The incinerators are being distributed, are already functional in the three senatorial districts of Edo State. Edo North in Aochi, Edo uh, Central in Iwa, and Edo uh, South in Benin. These are responsible for taking care of all waste that emanates from the treatment and management of coronavirus patients. Um, like I said, the issue about personnel and training is very key. So in dividing the approach and management of coronavirus into preventive and the management cases for the case in the area of case management. All right, uh, Dr. Okundira, Edo State Commissioner for Health. Uh, we're going to pause you all now and then go into the tweets that have been sent in by our viewers. The tweets are quite many, and some of them are also a bit lengthy. So we're going to, as much as possible, paraphrase them so that we can accommodate um, as many of the tweets. Mike Ayanko says, we must all go spiritual and prayerful while taking precautionary measures to prevent further spread of the disease. You know, and I kid you or lack of you tweets. I'm still worried, and of course, it's late now that the Federal Minister of Health.
did not consider it right from onset to call for emergency meeting of the National Council of Health. It is important that we use the donations to support health infrastructure nationwide. Comrade uh, Alhaji Ngara, efforts of uh, state governors in fighting COVID-19 are commendable. Let's pray according to our faith because prayers and proper hygiene are the only solution. Titus Monday Nock tweets, sober moments calls for sober reflections. Let's do our own part as citizens and obey simple hygienic rules and observe safe distance. We can observe our religious rights within our confined spaces. After all, God is omnipresent. COVID-19 would be conquered for those afflicted. Get well soon. Law Alpha C, total lockdown that is taking place in some states may lead to the resurgence of crimes. Government should think of putting in place adequate health facilities and advise the people on how to live and keep safe. What's, what's the basis for the claim that is going to lead to a resurgence of crimes? <laughs> Instead, part of what we are seeing now is a real cost to cyber crimes mm -hmm. rather than fiscal or property crimes that ordinarily would be the norm uh, uh, in, some, in some situations. So it's not a resurgence of crimes. That we are seeing now. The, the Deputy uh, Commissioner of Police, Frank Obama, was on Good Morning Nigeria last week and he did indicate uh, the anticipation of the certain kinds of crimes uh, that will be prevalent at this time. Yes, and Axum tweets, thanks for this platform. I came across an individual in Ibadan, where he is, who was of the opinion that COVID-19 is a disease of the rich. Therefore, was less concerned about how he moves and mingles. People need to be further enlightened. Thank you. And we have this from uh, Ohiagu Ugochuku. I commend state governors on the lockdown policy, but they should do well and provide for their people. There is no adequate power supply in many states, and foodstuff prices increase just before the lockdown. And Nanjo D. Dugule tweets, we appreciate the efforts of our government at all levels on the measures taken so far to combat COVID-19 pandemic. Workers' salaries should be paid as a matter of urgency. Hunger kills too. It's been killing before the advent of COVID-19. Food should not be an excuse whatsoever. Ali Maman Gaidai tweets, said the major problem in Nigeria is the shortage of test kits. Uh, thereby exposing many with COVID-19 to the public domain without them knowing it. Since the disease has no cure for now, the government should provide adequate immune booster drugs to Nigerians. And Hassan Adamu <coughs> tweets, the COVID-19 pandemic is a catastrophe that needs to be defeated with every measure at our disposal. Therefore, the state government has the cooperation of everyone to do the needful in making sure the virus doesn't spread to our villages. Cecilia Koroma, NTA, Good Morning Nigeria, thank you all for the sacrifices you are making in order that we are better informed. And OJM Streets have our security operators educated enough on how to treat persons such as journalists who need to go out to report situations and others that may be going to get medications or food. I ask this because it might be an opportunity to maltreat innocent citizens. I'm sure the uh, Minister of uh, Information will respond to that. And Nat Gom G. We have tweets the aftermath and ripple effect of this challenge is what government and individuals must also be prepared for. God help Nigeria and deliver Nigerians. Amen. Okay, all right. Uh, let's, let's return to our Enugu Network Center very briefly. Uh, the uh, Ebony State Commissioner for Information, doc, sorry, for Health, mm -hmm. Dr. Daniel uh, Umezurike. Uh, Dr. Umezurike, tell us something. I mean, there is no case of. COVID-19 in a Boeing state, but in terms of the precautionary measures, more especially social distancing uh, and personal hygiene, regular washing of hands, how much traction is this uh, gaining in, in your state? Are people observing social distancing? Are the markets still operating the way they were operating in the past? Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, in terms of uh, all the preventive measures, Ebon uh, State has been doing very well. And uh, you may recall that uh, our committee on um, anti coronavirus 219 is headed by uh, His Excellency, the Governor himself, and uh, all the ESCO members and the principal officers, local government chairmen, are deeply involved. And uh, uh, we are going house to house. Uh, uh, center to center, and all the 
uh, entry point into a boy state, emphasizing all these uh, preventive measures that uh, we have to do regular hand washing with soap and running water. We have to um, uh, do where possible to rub the hands with, uh, you know, um, the alcohol-based um, hand sanitizers, and uh, avoid all the uh, habits of, uh, uh, you know, touching the face and uh, no speaking, and also that uh, this is not the time to show, um, you know, friendship by uh, shaking hands, uh, you know, um, shaking hands and uh, hugging or pecking. But we should observe waving, uh, you know, waving, bowing, and uh, social distancing of not less than uh, one, mit uh, one meter, that is three uh, feet apart, at any, uh, you know, contact with any person. And in our markets, yes, we did shut down the markets and uh, uh, churches completely, but um, the health workers are always on board providing these hand sanitizers, educating the market uh, people, and also uh, most of them that uh, have uh, uh, their trade in the market, they use uh, face masks and also uh, hand sanitizers. And the, some of the items shops have been closed. We maintain the critical ones like uh, food stops and all the, all the groceries so that uh, people will not uh, you know, be stranded in what to, what to eat. Okay, thank you so much. We thank you so much for your contributions and we'd like to let you go now. Um, we've been speaking with um, Dr. Daniel Omer Zurike, a Boy State Commissioner for Health. Thank you so much for your input. We'll be going to Benin now. Yes, what is the role of the traditional institution in trying to educate people and you know, cooperate with government on ensuring that people are compliant on a final note. Yeah, thank you very much. As I said, the, the governor of Edo states inaugurated a tax force. In this tax force, the composition includes all the traditional leaders of the state, all religious leaders, all civil society organizations, but with regard to the traditional leaders, the governor has had a series of meetings with the Benin Traditional Council, ably headed by the Oba of Benin. And in these meetings, the council has been charged with certain responsibilities. And this goes about the efforts with social uh, mobilization and surveillance of the people. The traditional leaders have actually taken the bull by the horn, and we have uh, evidence to prove that they've had a series of meetings with their subjects and also have been involved in social mobilization, in sensitization of the people, knowing fully well that the most area of focus in handling coronavirus is on the, in the area of prevention, the area of social distancing, and efforts to avoid the spread of the coronavirus. We have evidence that the, look, the traditional leaders from all their various clans have been involved and they have put their subjects on, on, the, on, the, on the road to... Uh, Dr. Okundia, I would like to thank you very much, but there are some points that uh, we had, uh, liked you, would have liked you to uh, elaborate on. I mean, it's a do state on lockdown, for instance. Uh, we do know there was a letter that uh, emanated from the office of the Secretary of the State Government with regard to the closure of uh, entry and exit points into the state. Uh, you have uh, boundaries with a number of states. Ondo State is there. You also have Kogi, and then you also have Delta. And Delta had earlier also announced, uh, you know, the closure of its entry and exit points. So, but we didn't have enough time for that. So we're going to have to thank you regardless. We do hope that uh, we'll have you on the program some other time. Dr. Patrick Okundia, Edo State Commissioner for Health. Thank you for being with us on Good Morning Nigeria today. Let's go very quickly now to uh, Meduguri one more time and bring in the uh, Borono State uh, Commissioner for Health. Uh, Dr. Uh, Saliu, again, let, let's get your closing thoughts on this. There are a number of issues uh, emanating, you know, from uh, your brother, uh, Commissioners for Health in, in, in other states. Uh, what for you now will be the priority, very briefly? 
Uh, thank you very much. For us in Bono State, the priority will be and has always been prevention. Social mobilization, education, hygienic processes, and obedience to the rule of law. Social distancing, hand washing, and we continue to intensify our campaigns. And then ask people to, of course, go spiritual and continue to pray that this pandemic gets to go down. However, we continue to prepare and heighten our level of preparedness and surveillance as we review our processes and procedures almost on a weekly basis at the moment. Dr. Salu Ali Ukoyabura, Bono State Commissioner for Health. He joined us from our Medugui Network Center. Thank you so much for joining us. Minister, I'll come to you quickly on a topic before you respond to tweets. Journalist on the job. Some of our colleagues that came in this morning said they were harassed, they were stopped, they were blocked. They couldn't even make it here on time. What is, what, how can they ensure that journalists can just use their ID card, come to work without being embarrassed or harassed? We need to make that clarity here, please. Uh, Juma, I think yesterday I issued a statement where I said, journalists' ID cards are enough to, uh, guarantee, to guarantee their free movement, especially at this period. Uh, and I want to see the opportunity to please appeal to all the security authorities that we need journalists even to assist them so that they can even know who is not complying with the regulations. We need journalists to give us the state of affairs. I, I, I'm, I, the, the journalists actually are part of those uh, 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 very essential uh, workers that are exempted from these restrictions. So I'm taking this opportunity again to appeal to all the security authorities that please, as long as the journalist has a valid identification, you should please allow to carry on his or her own business. All right, and very briefly, Honorable Minister, your uh, parting shot on this uh, conversation. Well, I would quickly want to please make some response to the um, my counterpart, the, the minister, the commissioner for health in my do in uh, Borno State. Yes, I quite appreciate um, the challenges you know the you know he has raised, especially in the area of uh, <clears throat> transportation of um, uh, tests, and that is why we, uh, we the, the, yesterday I discussed with the task force that um, organizations such as the DHL, which has been very effective in helping us transport, um, you know, uh, um, yes, uh, ten, no, yes uh, specimens should please be uh, given um, uh, adequate, uh, you know, cover so that they can go on to do their jobs. Yes, he also mentioned the issue of the uh, Jespat um, um, machines. Yes, he's correct. Actually, we are looking for how we can adapt the cartridges. So I want to adapt the cartridges, it's, we'll be able to do the same job as uh, coronavirus. But my parting shot is that, please, there is yet no known cure for COVID-19. COVID. So please, insi you must please keep social distancing. You must continue on contact tracing. We must, case isolation is very important, and we must cancel all kind of mass gatherings. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Muhammad, we'd like to thank you for being with us on Good Morning Nigeria today. And that indeed does it for us on the program. We're back tomorrow, same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. Until then, uh, you stay safe. And my name is Kingsley Osagalo. And I'm Juma Yusuf. Please follow directives and stay safe.